Towards the start of the film, a veteran fisherman embarks towards the ocean, a routine he had repeated thousands of times before. He pitches his net from the vessel, but unexpectedly it snags on something submerged on the seabed. The fisherman dives to release it. However, he becomes trapped underwater when a tremendous swarm of fish encircle him. At the same time, a lighthouse operator promptly interrupts her call with a colleague in Germany on the topic of recent events. She had noticed an unusual alert on her screen that required immediate inspection. Meanwhile, Charlie must swim towards the boy named Judy to recover a sensor that, in some peculiar way, had gotten entwined in fishing nets. Unusual occurrences are taking place in Canada, where Leon, a youthful whale investigator, is summoned to the city beach in Vancouver. A colossal orca, bruised and damaged, had washed up on the shore hours prior. Post-examination, Leon journeys to the fishing pier to ascertain who is responsible for the severe injuries inflicted on the orca. An elderly fisherman takes Leon onto his boat, revealing to him the gnawing marks on the side of the vessel. This, he says, resulted from a desperate attempt to fend off the killer whale. Leon is skeptical of the tale, but firmly believes that the fisherman is truthful about the incident. Meanwhile, Charlie and her newfound friend launch a rehabilitated underwater device aimed at monitoring sea creatures. They discover an unprecedented amount of methane ice fragments around their marine vessel. Leon then hears reports of whale sightings along numerous coastal spots before they venture out into the ocean. In anticipation of his sea journey, Leon calls his partner, Lizzie, who has already embarked on a boat trip with tourists hoping to spot orcas in their natural habitat. A massive whale makes an appearance next to Leon's boat, freezing everyone aboard for minutes before it disappears beneath the water to be replaced by a group of orcas. Lizzie guides the tourists to the deck where they marvel at the beauty of the mammals. A humpback whale also shows up alongside their vessel, satisfying every passenger except Leon. In the meantime, the chef at a French eatery is planning to prepare lobsters freshly sourced from the market. In a surprising turn of events, one lobster ejects an unidentified liquid onto the chef's face. Despite this unsettling experience, the chef continues preparing the meal. However, by the end of the night, the chef has tragically passed, while two junior chefs are shifted to the ICU. Due to unknown sickness, waiting for tests results to shed light on this mystery. Elsewhere, Aboard a Norwegian ship out at sea, a camera is submerged underwater to investigate a strange occurrence, a surge of ice worms. Notably, these specimens possess jaws and they multiply rapidly. A committee is convened and unanimous consent is given that a novel species of worms and bacteria has been discovered. Back in Canada, Leon converses with a fishing boat owner who appears to provide some crucial insights. As a witness to the bizarre onslaught of humpback whales on other seafaring vessels the previous day, Leon also observed an unusually thick layer of mollusks enveloping the lower part of a returning ship, an oddity he had never encountered before. In order to examine the seabed where strange worms were spotted, a group of scientists deployed an underwater probe. Despite a methane leakage causing a sudden explosion, the ship and its crew fortunately survived, albeit quite shaken. The fear wasn't solely derived from the technical glitch, but also from the terrifying findings. Besides the unexpected hotspots on the seabed, ice-eating bacteria inhabiting the deepest layers were discovered. In the midst of these alarming discoveries, Jess decided to leave a video message for Charlie. Suddenly, the ship's instruments started to spew out strange signals. The water below began to bubble intensely and an unseen force started to drag the vessel into the shadowy depths. Meanwhile, in Venice, a love-struck young lad was reciting poetry on a bridge when he accidentally dropped his book into the canal. However, the duo quickly forgot their lost poetry book at the sight of an unusual spectacle, thousands of enormous jellyfish flooding the surface of the water. 
Back in the lab, a dangerous new bacterial strain was found in the system of the affected chef, feeding relentlessly on blood cells. The restaurant he worked in had been the common factor behind multiple fatalities. Concerned, Leon asked for permission to dissect a killer whale for study. He hoped to find links between the whale's behavioral changes and environmental pollution. While the whale's innards were inconspicuously normal, some unidentifiable substance was found in its brain and promptly sent for testing. Another infectee was found, a young lad working at a local car wash. His case helped the scientists realize that the bacteria had spread via the water supply, originating from the aforementioned restaurant. In light of new reports of whale attacks, Leon turned to the distribution of these incidents on a map and began discerning a pattern. All abnormal behavior in the whales seemed to coincide with their migratory patterns. To assert his theory, Leon headed to the whale's resting spot and successfully mounted a camera on one whale, narrowly escaping a near calamity. Meanwhile, reports reached Cigar about similar worm findings by the Japanese, a discovery they had chosen not to voice out globally. Additionally, in a two-pronged lab analysis of the acquired footage, Leon's whale camera had captured the creature delving into the darkest, deepest layers of the ocean where they encountered eerily glowing phenomena. Concurrently, back on the Sea Seed, people were faced with the shocking sight of throngs of crabs crawling out onto their village streets. Ultimately, another seabed image provided the final clues, lifting the veil on the frightening mystery. It appears that an oil and gas corporation was irresponsibly boring into ice in an off-limits location, causing harm to the seafloor over a considerable distance. Leon had to surreptitiously slip through a barrier to reach the protected port region to gather a few more mollusks for scrutiny from the vessel. Nevertheless, he was discovered by the security detail and subsequently detained come daybreak. Sato, the proprietor of a Japanese vessel, communicates with Leon to admonish him not to violate his domain. However, he agrees to grant unrestricted access to all material required for research. Jess's last recorded message, made just moments prior to the disaster, is only now grasped by Charlie. Following a flood of emotion, the girl discerns a few anomalies in the recording, such as a radiance seen through the porthole. Additionally, crabs that have begun appearing globally are brought into the lab. As anticipated, these crabs are laden with a peculiar substance that rapidly consumes blood cells. Charlie repeatedly scrutinizes the recording, puzzled by some inexplicable element. Finally, she perceives a sound similar to one from a deep sea recording. She brings her suspicion to the laboratory's attention, but Katarina, her austere supervisor, dismisses Charlie's ideas, deeming the noise coincidental. Katarina instructs Charlie to wrap up and close down operations for the season without spinning sensational theories. However, after thinking it over, Katarina reluctantly agrees to investigate Charlie's theory. A copter bearing a team of scientists and deep-sea apparatus arrives at the island, with the equipment delivered by Sigur. Yet, as he prepares for departure, alarming updates reach the mainland scientists, stating a monstrous tsunami is heading towards the shoreline. Seeing the enormity of the situation, they acknowledge there's no hope for survival. Sigur manages to alert Charlie, and they make their escape. A scientific conference presenting a report suggesting the identified bacteria purposefully infect humans takes place, inciting fear of water sources. Despite Leon's attempt to caution his fellow fishermen, they prefer to face their fate at sea rather than abandon the waters. Meanwhile, at the Institute, Rahim converges with Leon to partake in this conference, which gathers the brightest minds to hypothesize the reasons behind these occurrences. The majority are convinced of malevolent intentions to rid the oceans of humans. 
Defying the consensus, Katerina clings to her years of empirical knowledge, instructing the group to find a scientific explanation. Ignoring their mentor, the scientists present their theory to the world, persuading the government that sea creatures carrying the bacteria are waging an intentional assault on humanity. They even christen this new cognitive capacity, though it draws only mocking skepticism. In a bid to decipher an unusual signal originating from an unknown extraterrestrial entity, senior officers have advocated for a scientific approach as opposed to negotiations. Samantha Grove, an astrophysicist, steps forward in agreement, having studied the bizarre sounds thoroughly. She maintains that the audio has distinct traits that suggest it could be a foreign cosmic language. Remarkably, her team has been successful in picking up identical signals from Antarctica. The theory is also backed by a well-regarded figure from Japan, Mifun, who commits to funding Sigur's explorations in the hopes of possibly saving Earth. With a team of researchers behind him, Sigur reveals plans to embark on a mission to the Arctic in 48 hours. The scientists take a leave of absence to bid their families farewell despite pleas for them to abandon their potentially perilous journey. In their eyes, this is a critical chance to rectify an unknown problem. According to scientific research, it is proposed that the densest cluster of intelligent organisms resides in an Antarctic valley, potentially surviving there for millions of years. Amid preparations for making contact, the researchers engage with a young reporter in interviews. Suddenly, the ship's equipment begins displaying signs of disturbance. As they ready themselves to intercept a signal from the mysterious life form, Sarah, Mifuna's assistant, joins Leon and admits she wouldn't have believed their theory had it not been for her boss's proven track record of unfaltering intuition. Samantha formulates a plan to infuse a human child's scream into the audio signal from the life form to intimate their willingness to communicate. Wildly courageous, Charlie asks her co-worker to accompany her in a diving contraption down to the ocean floor just as the vessel drops anchor and begins transmitting the sound message. As the adventurous duo ready themselves, everyone aboard the ship eagerly awaits a response. Suddenly, the radar and sensors detect a movement and sound signal. Panic ensues as the duo and the diving equipment report technical issues and an oxygen shortage, but poor reception hampers their communication. Luther, the chief pilot, stands ready to retreat, but Charlie commands their attention with a sighting. Despite her report, communication with the crew is lost, and the vessel continues to draw near. Sigur urgently calls on the captain to retrieve the submarine, while Luther has no choice but to surface the vessel for safety. The vessel has a designated section specifically designed to receive the capsule, a feature noted by Charlie. She, however, keeps to herself the bizarre radiance she perceives enveloping them at that particular moment. Concurrently, Samantha communicates that stable contact has been established, with the sound signal returned and the sobbing of a child manipulated, indicating the bacterium's comprehension of the human message. Dr. Chase is on a quest for a remedy for those already contaminated with the bacteria. While Luther assures the press he didn't observe anything deep down, dismissing everything Charlie witnessed as probably an illusory creation of her own mind, much like the concept of intelligence itself. Despite this, Samantha endeavors to decrypt the extraterrestrial messages to create a responsive signal comprehensible to the advanced entities. The journalist, while in the compartment housing the capsule, discerns a radiance in the pool. Suddenly, the ship's lights go off and interference ensues. After normalcy returns, the journalist's lifeless body is noticed by the captain on the screen. Attempting to revive her, Dr. Chase observes a fluid akin to cerebrospinal fluid on her lips. Samantha informs the crew about a signal surge that occurred during the power search, which was unnoticeable due to its low volume. But more notably, according to the physicist, originated from within the ship itself. 
Concurrently, Charlie, despite overhearing her team's conversations, never found the strength to confess they had accidentally introduced the bacteria into the pool. Later, Leon checks on a girl whose body has mysteriously developed unusual markings, necessitating assistance from Sarah and another man, to restrain her while a spinal fluid sample is collected for evaluation. Dr. Chase's analysis reveals that the same substance previously found in sea organisms was also in Alicia's spinal cord. Chase postulates the bacteria were attempting to assimilate with Alicia's cells, a revelation that prompts Charlie to confess her earlier sighting. Recording a new message for Earth, including a sound image from astrophysicist Charlie, Samantha sends a surprise. The pool begins to experience peculiar light formations and starts glowing once more. Immediately, a reply from the advanced entity arrives, also containing an image. Desiring to witness the capsule's unveiling, Mifun's helicopter touches down on the ship, and subsequently, he views the pool camera recordings and the image sent in response to Samantha's message, a picture of a super ocean that enveloped a supercontinent millions of years ago. According to the scientists, the extraterrestrials have reminded them of their existence on Earth, which will outlast humans by a significant margin. Humans have a desire for the seas to remain untouched and unharmed, and there seems to be a glimmer of hope. Due to an entity being receptive to communication, the team now has the opportunity to engage in negotiations and potentially agree to a truce. In the interim, Chase designs a drug that could annihilate bacteria that feed on blood cells. This development triggers a disagreement within the squad. Mifuni intends to carry out a trial for the substance in a contained environment and, if successful, annihilate the R. Sigur, however, opposes this until it's verified that negotiations with the ER are not a viable option. Chase proposes a compromise, suggesting a trial run of the drug, but advises against rushing to unleash it into the vast open seas. The entire team congregates to monitor the test. Chase introduces the drug into the water, ensuing an immediate increase in the water level, accompanied by an alarming shriek causing the glass to shatter. It's reported to the captain that the ship is aimlessly drifting in the Antarctic waters with no operable equipment, surrounded by icebergs. The ship unexpectedly collides with an iceberg and is then bewilderingly transported somewhere else by a blue radiance. The captain instructs the crew to activate the engines to regain control, despite a lack of understanding about why they shouldn't dump the remaining drug into the sea. Sigur endeavors to elucidate to the captain that their current predicament is the consequence of a reckless experiment and that producing sufficient quantities of the substance to do away with Earth on a global scale is simply impossible. The only feasible solution is a peace treaty, while the team plans negotiations with Earth. The entity manages to ensnare the ship amidst icebergs. Charlie hastily relocates to the capsule in order to return Luther's body to ER as an act of total compliance. As she descends, Charlie unexpectedly alters the plan. She administers an injection into her heart consisting of Luca's sights, capable of merging with ER, and opens the capsule door. Luther's body falls and comes under ER's control, resulting in the ice blocks releasing the ship as the girl is enveloped by billions of lights underwater. Subsequently, Charlie steers the ship to a desolate Island. As she opens her eyes, they sparkle with a blue glow as she gazes up at the sky. Tell us what your thoughts are on this series in the comments section.